Alright guys, today I want to talk about the importance of patience when it comes to brawling in a battleship. Um, especially in tier 10 these days, the meta seems to be pretty stale, uh, long range, campy kind of kind of gameplay. And that really doesn't lend itself to brawling in a battleship. Um, a lot of the maps are designed in such a way that you can't really push in without getting focused down by enemy ships. Um, this, this side of the map is a great example of that. You see how it's just all open water except for a couple islands on the right. And being spotted in this open area allows opens you up to be shot at by everybody in front of you and everybody from the middle of the map as well. Um, this is a really difficult side to play on because of that. So you either want to be a really strong range ship to be on this side or you want to be a stealthy kind of destroyer ambush style ship um, if you if you're trying to push up well everybody knows you're coming you're gonna die <laughs> and that's why you can see me angle towards the middle of the map here I, I can't push this outside flank um, I'll play with my team and I'll support if I can but um, I'm gonna be waiting for the appropriate time to push that's that's the that's gonna be the key here is you'll see some little bit of patience coming out um, if I was on the other side of the map, I would be pushing instantly. As soon as the game starts, I'd be going because that side of the map, there's so much cover, especially around the 9-10 line. That's like one of my favorite, I think the 9-10 line on this map is my favorite um, place to be in this entire game. Um, unfortunately, it seems like I spawn on the 1-2 line far more often than the 9-10 line in this, in this map, but that's okay, we can make it work. Um, mid game on this map is pretty fun. Um, this is one of the better designed maps. I, th I think this outer um, AB kind of area isn't terribly well designed, but it's not bad. Um, so we're going to push up a little bit towards this main big island here. What I'm doing here is I'm just trying to keep um, any potential massive spam from the 4 or 5 line um, away from me. I, I want to focus on this Petro and this Yamato. Um, fortunately, the DD spots these Torps for us. We only eat two of them, but that could have been a lot worse. <laughs> and that's, again, something um, about patience. I didn't know that there was a DD there, and I probably should have expected a DD to be there, a uh, destroyer to be there to ambush me. Um, but you'll see, we'll, we'll take some map control here. You see how their ships aren't very um keen on pushing in on this side either this is, that's kind of the problem with this side it doesn't allow you to do much um in the way of pushing it's kind of just shoot at each other from range um now i'm trying to get out because i see the holland is pushing back towards this side of the map so i know he could be torping me through here so i just kind of want to cut off that angle that he could possibly do and of course angle to the torpedoes potentially where they're coming from um so you can see we're, you know, nearly four minutes into this game and I haven't really done any damage at all or, you know, I just shot my first bit of secondaries, which is kind of kind of boring, but you sometimes have to be patient. Um, as you can see, Ohio guns are really nice. <laughs> For a full secondary build, they're surprisingly accurate and they do a ton of damage when you catch someone broadside. Um, and now we could potentially push up the 1-2 line since they don't have that cruiser and we know what's there at this point. We know it's just a Holland, that Yamato, and um, this Daring. But I don't want to solo push into torpedoes. So I'm going to push through the middle of the map here. Um, you'll see me start to turn in, in here at this point because I want to help my Yu Yang fight this Daring and this Holland. Because he has radar, as we can see, which is kind of rare. But um, when you see the Destroyer having radar... You want to be pushed up with him because he's vulnerable. Because he can't, um, at least a Yu Yang can't smoke up then. So, especially in a CV game, we need to protect this guy. So I'm going to push up with him to try and help him deal with this Holland yet as well. And at the same time, I'm seeing, I'm looking at the map and thinking, can I push through C? Um, that's what I'm looking for. I'm constantly thinking, can I push here? Can I push there? And. Now that we've killed one of their two destroyers on this flank, and the majority of their ships is actually over on the right hand side of the map, I am starting to feel like I can push. Um, I do have to wait for some torpedoes to pass by, but 
I'm looking favorably towards that uh, that middle of the map, and you can see there's a Montana pushing in, and I'm thinking maybe it's possible by the time I get around the island um, at sea there, perhaps I'll be in a secondary fight with that Montana, and of course I'm heavily favored against a Montana in a close range fight, just due to my secondaries being so strong and him not having them at all. So we're waiting and waiting. Um, my team's been playing passive, but pretty decent this game. Um, I'm seeing the D flank starting to crumble a little bit, so I do know we need to make a play here. Um, as you can see, they have full control over the cap, and they're about to be coming down the 9-10 line. I'm assuming at any minute here um, to push fully around and and put all of our ships out of that uh, out of that area. So I want to be in C by the time they do that, so that they can't shoot at me. Um, if we get trapped into this bottom left quadrant of the map, um, it's pretty much just game over for us. Um, so we need to make a push now, otherwise the game's lost. Because then the enemy ships will have two flanks shooting at us. And you don't really want to be in a crossfire between a bunch of cruisers and... Uh, uh, looks like a Kerfirst on that side, and a Montana and Yamato. That is not a crossfire you want to be in, a part of. So, um, we see that the destroyer just launched his torps, so we're pretty confident that he's still on this left-hand side of these kind of middle islands here on the 4-5 line. So I feel pretty free to push in to see. Um, the Montana is going to be around here as well, which I'm really looking forward to. And there you can see the Zhao is just popping up around that uh, 910 island. So we're getting pinched here pretty good. So we need to make a play, otherwise, it's game over. And as you can see, I have a lot of health. I have three heals left. Um, we're still in the still in the green as far as health goes, which is pretty surprising for me by the uh, 13 minute mark. I'm usually down at least two heals and probably on 50,000 health or less. Um, just because I kind of push like crazy because I get a little bit bored. But uh, I did a good job of staying patient this game, I would say. And this is probably how, she, how you should approach most games. Don't expect to do tons of damage with a secondary build in the early game. Um, you're, you are a mid to late game specialist, as you're going to see. So we don't have a ton of damage now, but it racks up pretty quick here. <laughs> we kind of just kind of roll through the enemy team at this point. Um, you can see another ship uh, has popped up on the 9 line, and my team has just started running, right? Like, you can see the Kerr first, the Venezia, Yoshino, they're all just running to our back line. So if I don't make this play, and I just sit in, in the B cap like I was doing, just kind of hanging out, we would probably lose because all these ships up here would be shooting at us and my ships and my friendly ships down in our spawn, and there'd be nothing to do, so... As you can see, I'm pretty safe from those ships on the 910 line because of the island on my right. Um, I'm trying to angle to the Montana and hopefully not give up too much side to this Yamato. Um, I do get a little bit lucky with that Yamato not looking at me, but I mean, a Minotaur is a pretty juicy target um, on my team there, right next to me. So we finally get the Montana, and now here is a a weird situation. If I push straight out here, I'm giving broadside to both the Kerr first and the Yamato on the enemy team. So I'm initially thinking, okay, turn left, go through the gap, and then deal with the Yamato, and then deal with the Kerr first. But I just check what the Kerr first is doing with that um, with that kind of running lights mod or whatever that tells you if the ship's going forward or backwards. And I think I can probably sneak up uh, over top of this gap and deal with the Yamato while maybe getting some secondaries on the Kerr first. As long as I can stay angled, if I can get out this uh, gap without giving too much broadside up, I should be fine. Um, nice little hit on the carrier. Unfortunately, we don't kill him. <laughs> I, I, I tend to shoot carriers more than I should. I probably should have focused on the Yamato more here. Um... We're starting to take some fire from the uh, curve first, as you can see, but we're pretty well angled at this point, so I'm not too afraid. It's mainly going to be his secondaries that deal damage to us, but at this range, they're actually not nearly as good as our secondaries are. Um, a couple fires lit up on that Yamato, a bit more damage on the midway. 
um, you'll see that we don't actually end up killing him. So if you can't, if you don't just kill out outright an aircraft carrier, it's probably not worth shooting at them. There's usually a better target. Um, here's another nice thing about the uh, Ohio versus some other other secondary ships is the turret traverse stock is good enough that I can have my turrets turned in time for this Yamato to come around this corner and we actually just don't take any damage from them. Um, it's a pretty nice feature of the uh, of the Ohio, I'll, I'll, I gotta say. These guns are, as far as all the secondary battleships are concerned, I would say these are probably the best guns you're gonna get um, on a battleship that can focus on its secondaries. This Kerfirst has a pretty massive advantage on us, as you can see. We're half health, he's full health, but we have a we have a little secret that's gonna that's gonna pop right now, and that's gonna help us win this fight because Confederate not only affects your main guns, gives you 20% uh, reload buff, it also affects your secondaries again for 20%. So we we deal a lot of damage to this Kerfirst. <laughs> Um, our secondaries have 12% fire chance, we're just gonna get a bunch of fires on this guy, and our, gu our main guns obviously do a lot of damage too, being 457 millimeters. So there you see, we've won this game pretty handily. Um, I'd say our push up the middle maybe didn't completely decide the game, we might have won it otherwise. As you can see, our southern flank did end up winning. Um, but it did allow us, as a team, to not deal with a Yamato Montana combo on our north flank and their entire enemy the entire team pushing from the uh, from the right side as well you know we didn't have to deal with a crossfire which I think probably helped us win the game as you can see big damage from these guns they're they're really quite awesome and yeah that's gonna just do it for the game we actually don't end up getting the uh, we don't end up getting the midway, unfortunately. But I think this uh, this game was a nice example of what um, a well-timed push can do to really swing a game in your favor. Um, despite a secondary build being a bit of a meme build, um, they can be really, really strong if you put it in the right position at the right time. Um, as you can see, we did some pretty massive damage there by the end. 254k is always a good game, including a dev strike. Um, and the key here is, look at how much secondary damage we dealt. Um, 35k raw damage, and then another 45k from fires. And not a single HE shell um, sent out, which is pretty hilarious. And we ended up actually dealing 94,000 damage to that curve first in that short, short, short period of time, which is pretty nuts. So, yeah, this is a nice little push. Um, I hope maybe a bit of patience... Uh, will help you guys do a little bit better with your secondary builds. So thanks for watching, and I hope you have a good day.